but you do need to understand, like let's, I was gonna talk about cars, but let's talk about APIs because we're talking about programming. You do have an understanding of APIs and like rest and, you know, post and put and yeah, all this stuff. You, yeah, yeah, there, I mean, there is obviously something beyond dot slashing and, you know, with, with things like APIs. I mean, I had to learn Postman. I had to understand that you need a dedicated API client in order to be able to do the things you want to do with an API. And I, I stumbled on Postman. You know, there there are tools you need. There's an understanding of those tools. You know, just because you can go out to Home Depot to buy a drill or a miter saw doesn't mean that you know how to use it, the, you know, effectively like, you know, a general contractor can. Just because you can go out there and purchase a copy of Burp Suite instead of using the community edition doesn't mean you automatically are a hacker and know how to use it. You have to learn the math. You have to master the tools of your trade. A tool is only as good as the person using it, right? You know, I'm I'm a strong believer in that. Yeah. So yes, you, I did have to. Yeah, you know, I have to understand API requests. You have to understand JSON. You have to look at JSON, understand what it's doing. You have to understand what you're looking at. That the tool, the the empirical data is is being provided. You need to understand it. You need to be able to demystify what's happening right now when you're sending that API request. What's the difference between a put and a delete? You know, what are HTTP verbs and what is their consequence on this API request? So tell me, with the APIs, you you you, you hacked a bunch of banks. You 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 hacked medical <laughs> records. And I, I I I think you said it in the introduction, but just remind me, it was what like you were doing like eight minutes an app or something crazy. You were hacking these banking apps. Is that right? Yeah. So it originally started with um, a set of fintech and financial services apps. That was my yeah. first foray into vulnerability research where I downloaded, it was, I think it was 20 financial services and fintech mobile apps. The research was sponsored. Um, and I I ended up um, reverse engineering those and learning what, what does that mean to reverse engineer an Android APK file and yeah. what are the tools that you need to do it? And then being able to comb that source code for hard-coded API keys and tokens. And then taking that further and realizing why, what's this whole whole world of APIs. What are these keys and tokens doing? And, and so researching that. And then I, I my next vulnerability research was downloading and, and then hacking and going after the API endpoints that these app, apps were communicating with. And of course, this was um, in collaboration with the banks. Um, there was no illegal stuff happening here. <laughs> so a very large bank came along and several, several financial services companies came along and said, Alyssa, you understand APIs. Uh, we want you to come in and hack these and tell us how how vulnerable they're. See, here's the thing, David. You can't just throw a rock and hit a penetration tester that knows how to hack APIs. I know the most senior penetration testers in the world, been doing it for 20 plus years, and they stay away from APIs. They run screaming when they see JSON. Just because you're a senior penetration tester doesn't mean that you know how to hack APIs. But I think that's changing. And I and hashtag more, please. I want to see more of that which is why Mel and I created the API Secure Conference. Here's the thing. When I think of an API hacker, there's only a few names that come to your mind, right, David? There's Dr. Katie Paxton Fear. She's a huge influencer uh, in the API hacking space. Shine my own spotlight, me, right? So there's me, there's Dr. Katie Paxton Fear. There's David Sopas, who created that huge mind map of um, all the different tools used in API hacking. He's he's going to actually be uh, speaking at our conference. But So there's only a few names. I can count them only on one hand. We need to change that, right? I'm sure there's other API hackers out there that I've missed, but the ones that are out there in front of the camera sharing knowledge, um, you know, trying to create more YouTube videos around this to teach it, um, really, you know, are myself, Dave, Dr. Katie Paxton Fear, and, and we need to change that. And that was the impetus behind us creating this conference. Uh, was to be able to train future women, non-binary, you know, disenfranchised, just and and men, and also you know, male allies, and and just everyone who identifies, no matter what your gender is, you know, just trying to train future hackers and of APIs and defenders, because this is where the data is, David. And there's a reason that Gartner said that APIs are going to be the number one point of entry for breaches in 2022. Because that's where the data is. If you want oil, what do you do, David? You go to where the oil wells are, exactly. right? You go. Yeah. That's where you go. You go to the oil fields and you drill where the oil is. If you're hacking today, it's for profiting off of the data. You know, you and I talked about what it was like 20 years ago. It was about defacing websites and World of Hell and Rafa was here. 
and getting on that Aldous defacement mirror. Now today, it's about stealing data. It's ransomware. It's profiting twice off of that data with lock and leak, you know, ransoming the company that you've stolen the data from and still leaking it and then selling it on the dark web. And where is that data these days now? They're not sitting on file servers. They're sitting in APIs. There's the, so you need to learn how to hack APIs if you're going to go after the data. So I, th I believe that that's the future battlefront is APIs, if not today. I'm glad you said that because it's like for people who are up and coming in the industry, you, you don't necessarily want to go after what everyone else is you know, ready a master at. You want to try and get into something new. You mentioned you mentioned like uh, cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. I mean, it looks like APIs, from what I've seen you say in the past, is one of those things that's often an afterthought. Like I think you mentioned that some of the apps were created by the marketing departments, not by technical yeah. people. And you, so let, let let's talk about that. And then also like your you have you you had you mentioned this thing about like developers versus security. And I, I, I can't say it as well as you, you you said. So can you explain that as well? Where you said like there should be a security group looking at the APIs. Yeah. So I'm a big believer, David, in shift left security shield right. So shift left security is the idea that you're weaving cybersecurity into the software development lifecycle while the code is being written or while the product is being manufactured, all the way up to shielding, right? Once it's deployed in production, you're protecting it against future vulnerabilities and other flaws that you may miss. Because until computers can write their own code, it's going to be vulnerable. Humans are, you know, we're fallible. We're, we make mistakes. We, we will write insecure code. So we need to protect it in production once it's there for the things that we missed or that our tools missed. You know, so yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely that shield, you know, that that shift left and shield right mentality. And then there was the first part of your question. Can you, can you repeat that one? Yeah, sorry. What I was saying is um, it looks like a lot of APIs haven't been developed properly, if you, if for lack of a better word. Like I think you mentioned that some of the banking apps were developed by marketing departments. Yeah. It was like an yeah. afterthought. Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And and then you know, with with the research, I think this was the most startling thing for me that I wasn't prepared for. So one of the banks, extremely large bank. I mean, for those of you who think, oh, well, let's say you just targeted small community banks that don't have a budget and don't have people that know what they're doing. These are these are financial services and fintech companies that have billions of dollars of assets under management in some cases, trillions of dollars. Wow. One of the most startling things for me from this research was that a lot of the banks, as a matter of fact, about 300 of them had actually outsourced the development of their APIs and their apps to a single company. Wow. And that single company was developing these APIs and apps. So the vulnerabilities that I found in one bank had been actually <laughs> copied and pasted and reused into oh, 300 wow. other banks. It was, I would say, probably the biggest finding of my, my two decade career. The other thing is, you know, like you said, in organizations where the marketing department was involved in developing the app and not necessarily the cybersecurity team. In one instance, the bank, the cybersecurity team for the bank didn't even know that the development was going on, that didn't know that, you know, the CTO and the chief product officer and the people that were responsible for building the app had even started a project to do it. And it's that whole working in a vacuum. This is, and I don't think it's intentional. I'm, I'm not a pessimist. I like to look at, I like to see the good in people versus immediately saying, well, they did this intentionally to hide it. I feel like people are just so laser focused these days when they are, um, that they don't think about involving the CISO or the security team. It's, and it's not intentional. It's not to be malicious. I think they're just focused on a deadline and getting there and then forgetting, oh my God, the security team doesn't know about this. Oh my God, they haven't tested it. Um, so I think, you know, conferences, shows like yours, I think all of these things are helping to change that narrative and are bringing us into a more secure future. But I think it's we we need we can only change it with education, and and I feel like we'll 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 start to move away from organizations that it's just the marketing department.